Hi there, today on Top Book of Books, we're talking about these books that I just bought and reading what I already own. That's right, the Read What You Own Challenge, which you might have seen over at Criminali's channel and other channels. Uh, Fiber Artsy talked about it too recently. So yes, the Read What You Own Challenge. I am starting easy at 25 books, but we'll talk about that in a minute. First, I want to talk about Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge. This, you may recall, is not on my reading list this October, but I've already started reading it because I just bought it. My podcast partner, Wes Dead Air Knipe, asked me, hey, have you ever read Dark Harvest? He knows I have a big affinity for Scarecrow magic and Halloween, and you know, this is all about Halloween, and this could be a lot of people's classic Halloween read since it came out and won a Bram Stoker award and I'd never read it. There's a movie coming out and that was why he was talking about it because we do Dead Air podcast, the podcast about horror films. So he was curious to watch it, wondered if I'd read it and he was thinking of buying the book and reading it beforehand, which is kind of a rare move. I'm the big reader of the two of us and I thought, you know, it's not a challenge. I just thought, you know what? It's a short book. <laughs> I might as well pick it up. And that went hand in hand with my realization that I buy way too many books. We all have this realization from time to time, especially those of us that collect books and can't say no to a really cool copy. Now I was at two great places to buy books. One, a book sale at my work for charity. And the other was the Book Emporium in Merrickville. So you would say like, you should, be able to buy what you like and pick up what you want. When you see a book you want or like, you should be able to buy it. It's tough though. And a case in point is buying multiple versions of things. I had seen copies all the time of Dracula and I keep buying them. I'm also on the hunt for a copy of Night Shift and aren't we all really? Uh, but there's a particular one with the hand that has the step back. And that was the first copy of Night Shift I ever read. It was my mother's. And mine doesn't have that. It's a reprint, I suppose, or a later edition. And I saw one. And this is the book buying bug. It was destroyed. It was a no good, very bad copy. And I have a little video of how no good and in what rough shape it was in. I was so tempted to buy it. And that's the book buying bug. I was bit by. If I can think of any more alliteration, I'll cram it in there. But yeah, I didn't buy it because it is so destroyed. I left it for somebody who's never read Night Shift. And you know, that makes more sense to me. There was also a couple uh, Skeleton Crew editions there as well, real handy old copies, but I have those bugs. I wouldn't mind a copy of that step back cover, but not in that condition. That book buying bug though, when it bites, ouch. So I am tempering the book buying bug and I'll have another video on this later, a dedicated video about the read what you own challenge and not buying any more books. I'm going to start really low at 25. See if I can't read 25 books off my shelves, which you know, as well as I do, I've picked up some really cool books. These aren't all going to be on that list of 25 either because, you know, I've got other books to read and I've had books gifted to me to read. So I'll go over the rules again later, but there will be some exceptions. Going on book buying binges and being bitten by the book buying bug are not going to be exceptions. But hey, I picked up some books and you may see I picked up a French copy of The Bad. Why you ask? I'm learning French slowly but surely. And why not pick up something that is written in a pretty approachable grade level in French that I've already read so I know the story and I can follow along a little easier. This will be a chore, but hey, it goes along with the few other French books that I own that I tackle here and there. I was looking for kids books incidentally and didn't find any. At that same sale, I got a fantastic copy of Naomi Klein's No Logo. I have a digital copy of this book and I haven't owned this for a long time. I've taken it from the libraries a couple times when I was younger and when it first came out. But this is a really gorgeous high clay content copy of it. A very heavy hardcover at that that is like an original pressing of this book. So I'm pretty pleased. It was in really, really good condition with the dust jacket. So yeah. Really pleased to have a copy of this to go along with Doppelganger. Two of her best books, I'd say. 
So when we were in Merrickville, I did get a couple photos. It is so fall and gorgeous. It's a Halloween town. We go there each year and I hope that that tradition never ends because I really love a little Halloween town. And there may be a little touristy town that the motorcyclists go to in the summertime for ice cream near you. And this is our version of that town. And being Canada, I got a copy of The Rat River Trevor by Thomas P. Kelly, author of The Black Donnellys. The Black Donnellys are also a, uh, not an urban myth. They were really real. It is part of our history here, a tragic, tragic part of our history here in Ontario and The Rat River Trapper. Maybe not Ontario, but it is one of the first true crimes. I'll be reading this alongside In Cold Blood as like a true crime component to my reading what you own challenge because now I own this, right? Even though these are late additions to that ginormous stack you see growing and growing behind me. I think I might turn all my spines out or something to assist. Right in time for the Halloween season, even though I won't be reading them for Halloween, is Ghost Stories of M.R. James. It's just a really gorgeous copy with some really neat devilish little motifs on there, sort of like a clip art, line art, devil motif. And this is in the tradition of a penguin pocketbook that's out from Penguin Random House. So I think that that's a very good trend of theirs to keep on with the gorgeous quality penguin pocketbooks that have brought reading to the masses for centuries. Well, maybe not centuries, but a long damn time. And a book that I may turn to here and there. I'm still amassing books for an anthology video I want to do, but cults. This is exactly what the doctor ordered. I have all kinds of anthology books. You know, I have collections and best of and themed things and a really, really good anthology on psychos. A lot of anthologies on vampires like we have all kinds of those cults though you ever get the hankering to read cult books you know you read a really good cult novel and you're like oh i just want more of that well now i have a book about cults so an anthology of secret societies sects and the supernatural stories by frank harris stephen king hg wells cornell woolrich and others edited by charles g waugh and martin h greenberg editors i've never heard of i'd never seen this book it's really gorgeous it's got all kinds of really interesting authors like robert block stephen king and so it is one of those anthologies much like the one i talked about lately enter boogeyman that has like a list and reprints and new authors and all kinds of a mixed bag this though i'd never heard of before have you read cults is it on your shelf let me know in the comments because i'm very curious if anyone else has read this book before this comes from barnes and noble books and that's probably part of why i've never heard of it i'm just looking at the copyright page here looking for the copyright page more accurately so 1983 i did not know that barnes and noble had their own editions of things i guess like chapters indigo does too like they have their own sort of reprint thing and they did an anthology a horror anthology on cults nevertheless that's really interesting to me so yeah like i said if you do have it let me know very curious Really neat little cover. I also picked up a gift for my sister, which kind of ties into my uh, read what you own challenge. I'm still gonna be able to buy gifts cause this will take place over Christmas, right? So I'll be able to read gifts, I'll be able to buy gifts, but I won't be able to buy books for me. I won't be able to add books to these already teetering shelves. I cleared out one of the bottom shelves that I had used for like periodicals and things. So I'm gonna be moving some books down, making some room on the shelves and making some room for the 25 books that I wanna read off of these shelves. So yeah, are you doing the challenge? I'm very curious. I know I'll have a video dedicated to it. If you own a copy of Cults, definitely let me know. Is there anything else here that is on your shelves? This is my last haul, my last haul before I stop buying books until I can read 25 of the darn things. It was unplanned too. I didn't mean to go buy books and that's part of the problem. Thank you ever so much for watching and have an ooky spooky day.